Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me to give a talk uh, at the Graphs and Matrix Seminar. Uh, and thank you all for joining in. Um, so as Rose mentioned, I'll be talking about ideal clutters and dyadic uh, fractional packings. Uh, this is based on joint work with uh, Gerard Cornejols at Carnegie Mellon University and Bertrand Gonin and Levent Tensol at uh, the University of Bordeaux. Um, so let's get started. <coughs> so uh, uh, I'll start by explaining what a uh, clutter is. Um, clutters are a fairly broad family of objects that generalize graphs and matrix uh, in various ways. Uh, so uh, we're given a finite uh, set of elements uh, called the ground set um, E, and we're given a family of subsets of E called uh, members. Uh, we'll say that this family forms a clutter over ground set E if uh, no member contains another one. So in this uh, figure that you see here, the black points uh, represent the elements in E and uh, the blue blobs uh, uh, represent the uh, members. See, and as you can see, no member contains another one. So it's a, it's a messy set of elements, therefore the, the name clutter. Um, <clears throat> Okay, um, so there, there are many examples of uh, clutters that one can come up with. Uh, given that this is a graphs and matroid seminar, I'll, I'll uh, focus on examples coming from uh, these objects. So if you give me a graph, uh, G over vertex set B and H set E, uh, we could look at three uh, uh, clutters uh, arising from the graph. The first one would be the, the family of spanning trees of the graph G. So here we're viewing every spanning tree as an edge subset B. And as you know, all spanning trees have the same uh, size. So no spanning tree would contain another one. So this indeed forms a clutter over the ground set E. Uh, another family would be the clutter of uh, uh, circuits of the graph uh, by circuits. Uh, circuits are also referred to as, um, uh, I should have used this. Circuits are also referred to as cycles uh, in the coloring community, but I'll stick to the uh, circuit terminology. And uh, again, no circuit contains another one, so therefore this family forms a clutter over uh, ground set E. And uh, finally, another, uh, the last example uh, that we'll, we'll look at is the family of ST paths of a graph. So here we're given distinct vertices S and T of the, of the graph G, and we'll look at all the paths connecting at S and T. And again, our minimality assumption uh, in the definition of SD paths implies that the family of SD path forms, forms a clutter, uh, in this case, over ground set E. So we'll view every SD path as an H subset. Okay, so, um, these are three examples of clutters uh, that one might be interested in uh, coming from graphs. All of these examples have uh, natural generalizations to matroids. So uh, let me mention those. So spanning trees uh, uh, obviously generalize to bases of a matroid M. So we're given a matroid M over ground set E and we could look at the family of bases. And again, every basis has the same size. so this family forms a clutter. The second one also generalizes easily, uh, uh, the family of circuits of a matroid M, i.e. the minimal, uh, minimally dependent sets also form uh, a clutter um, over ground set E. Now that last one that we have, uh, uh, how would we generalize the concept of ST paths of a graph to, uh, to objects in matroids. Uh, so this one uh, isn't uh, too obvious, but it's also not too difficult to see. If you, if you look at ST paths of a graph and pretend that you have an edge between S and T, add an auxiliary edge between S and T, all ST paths turn into circuits that use this auxiliary edge omega. Okay, so one can view all it, the, set, the, the family of ST paths as the clutter of circuits through a fixed element minus that element. And this is how one would generalize ST paths to matroids. So that 
the generalization of ST paths would be uh, uh, given a matroid and uh, it's a fixed element omega, a matroid M and a fixed element omega. One can look at uh, the clutter of circuits that go through the element omega and then take away the element omega from those, uh, from those circuits. And this forms another uh, clutter or ground set E minus omega. So this should be, this should say over ground set E minus omega. And this clutter is referred to as the port clutter of the, of the matroid M. This terminology is due to Seymour from the mid seventies. Okay, so uh, one can generalize those uh, three clutters, graph clutters to, uh, to matroid clutter. Any questions about any of uh, these examples? Okay. So um, now given a clutter, uh, uh, clutters just like matroids and graphs are embedded with notions of uh, duality and minors. So here I'll explain this, the notion of duality and the notion of minors uh, I'll, uh, I'll delve into later on in the talk. So what is this notion? Um, so given a clutter C over ground set E, one can come up with the concept of a cover, which is nothing but a subset of elements that intersect every member at least once. So, um, so he, we have, so B is a cover if and only if it intersects every member at least once. And if you have a cover, anything that contains that cover is also a cover. So supersets of covers are also covers. So not all covers are interesting. The interesting ones are those that are inclusion wise minimal. So we'll, uh, we'll work with uh, minimal covers. And by definition, the family of minimal covers forms another clutter over the same ground set. And we will refer to this clutter as the blocking clutter of the starting clutter. Okay. Um, and uh, it is a fundamental result of Isbell, uh, a game theorist uh, from the 50s, and also Edmonds and Fulkerson. That uh, the blocking relation is indeed a, uh, a duality uh, concept. They prove that the blocker of the blocker is the clutter itself. Okay, so what we have here is an involution. Okay, so this tells us that the family of clutters uh, uh, can be divided into pairs, blocking pairs. Okay, so looking back at our examples, if we look at the clutter of spanning trees of a graph, uh, what, are, what is the blocker of this clutter? So to figure out what the blocker is, we need to figure out what the covers are. And again, what are the covers? The covers are things that intersect every spanning tree at least once. So what are these things? Uh, so if you partition the vertex set of your graph into two sets, every spanning tree needs to connect at least one vertex from the left to one vertex from the right. Okay, so from this we can conclude that every cut is a cover for the clutter of uh, spanning trees. And uh, the converse of this uh, can also be shown easily that if you have a cover of the spanning trees, it must contain a, a cut. So that implies that the blocker of the clutter of spanning trees is the clutter of minimal cuts. Or they're also referred to as bonds. Okay. And this can also be uh, generalized uh, fairly easily to, to matroids. If you work with the clutter of bases of a matroid, then the blocker is nothing but the clutter of co-circuits of M. So these are the minimal uh, dependent sets of the dual matroid. All right, so this blocking relation generalizes uh, the notion of matroid duality. So that's one way. There's another way it generalizes that. So if we look at the clutter of ST paths of a graph, it can be easily shown that the blocker of this object is the clutter of minimal ST cuts. Every uh, ST cut would have to intersect every ST path. 
at least once. So the block curve uh, and uh, vice versa, if you have something that intersects every ST path at least once, it must be because it contains an ST path. So the blocker of the clutter of ST paths is the clutter of ST paths or minimal ST paths. And uh, this can also be generalized to matroids. If you're working with the port clutter of a matroid M, you can easily show that the, well, not easily, but it's also not difficult. The, uh, this is, I think, an exercise in Oxley, James Oxley's book. The blocker of the port clutter is nothing but the port of the dual through the same element. So these are all the co-circuits through omega minus the element omega. And the reason why this is true is because of uh, uh, the fact that circuits and co-circuits do not intersect exactly once. And this is one of the characterizing relationships uh, between circuits and co-circuits. Okay. So this is another way in which the blocking relation generalizes the notion of matroid duality. All right. So now. Clutters are fairly broad objects. Uh, so uh, uh, what sort of interesting question can we ask about them? Most interesting questions about clutters can be traced back to packing and covering questions. So uh, let me first start off by uh, the covering problem. So given a clutter, the covering number uh, denoted by tau of C is the minimum cardinality of a cover. So this is the minimum number of elements you need to intersect every member at least once. And uh, examples of uh, the covering problem include the minimum ST cut problem, the matroid girth problem, minimum vertex cover problem, in which uh, you're given a graph and you wanna find the minimum set of vertices that intersect every edge at least once, and also the minimum edge cover problem, where you uh, swap the notions of uh, vertices and edges. And uh, given that the, the problem two and three are NP-hard problems, that implies that computing the covering number of a clutter is an NP-hard problem. And uh, this problem, the covering number problem, can be modeled as an integer program. And this is actually a very basic and important integer program. And what does this uh, integer program do? It assigns an int a non-negative uh, integer to every uh, ground set element of the clutter, okay? With the property that uh, you want the sum of the variables inside every member to be at least one, okay? So this is just making sure that you intersect every member at least once. And subject to these constraints, you wanna minimize the cardinality of your cover, so that's minimize one transpose X. Right, so the covering number can be modeled as an integer program. This uh, will end up being important in this talk. So uh, the packing, the covering problem comes with a dual uh, concept uh, known as the packing problem. So in the, for the packing problem, what you're interested in is the maximum number of pairwise disjoint members. And you denote this by uh, nu of c. And uh, you can show that nu of c gives a lower bound for the covering number. And the reason for this is that whenever you give me a packing of uh, uh, members, uh, one through nu of c, and you give me a cover, every cover needs to intersect every one of these members at least once. It might intersect something twice, but it needs to intersect every member at least once. So this is a cover. And so that implies that the size of the cover needs to be at least nu of c for every cover. All right, so that uh, proves that remark that we have there. The packing number always provides a lower bound for the covering number. And uh, again, uh, packing problems, examples of packing problems include uh, dis the disjoint ST path problem in which you're looking for maximum number of pairwise edge disjoint ST paths. Even the vertex version of that is a packing problem. 
Pack and matroid basis is another example. The maximum matching problem is another example. And that one, the, that last one, the thinker, the maximum stable set problem, that can also be formulated as a maximum, uh, as a packing problem. I'll leave that uh, to you as an exercise. And uh, just like the covering problem, this uh, problem can be modeled as an integer program. Now this time, you assign a non-negative integer to every member instead of every element with the property that the congestion at every element of the clutter is at most one. What does that mean? So the sum of the variables assigned to the members containing a fixed element should be at most one. So if the y's are to be integral, that means that every element should be contained in at most one of the members that you pick, which is saying that the members that you pick are pairwise disjoint. And subject to these constraints, what we want is we want to maximize the size of our packing. So that's maximize one transpose y, which is a linear function. So we've uh, successfully modeled this as a as a linear integer program. I should say by integer program, I implicit a linear uh, integer linear program. Okay. Now. <clears throat> We could take these two integer programs that we have and we could linearize them. So we could drop the integrality condition that we have. So we've, we've dropped that and replaced it by, uh, instead of asking X to be a non-negative integer, we'll ask it to be a non-negative real number. And similarly for uh, uh, the packing problem. When you do that, uh, you're gonna end up getting relaxed parameters, uh, tau, tau star of C, and new star of C, okay? So this tau star that we get, because the feasible region has, is now larger than the integer program we had, the tau star ends up being uh, a smaller number, smaller or equal to number. And similarly with the maximization problem, new star now has uh, a, a larger feasible region, so the, the optimum is going to be a larger number, new star. And what's fascinating here is that these two parameters are actually equal, tau star and new star. And this is because of linear programming duality. These two linear programs that I have here, these are LP duals. So by strong duality, tau star and new star are equal. Okay, and uh, another fascinating thing about this is that now we could use the theory of linear programming to argue that tau star, which is equal to new star, can be computed in polynomial time. Unlike tau of c or, or new of c, all right? So, what we can do is by linearizing, we can come up with a relaxed uh, notion, notions of fractional packings and coverings that are easily computable. We'll refer to solutions to this linear program, the bottom one, as fractional packings. In contrast to integral packings. All right, so fractional packing is nothing but an assignment of non-negative real numbers to the members so that the congestion at every element is at most one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and we'll be working with fractional packings uh, throughout the talk. Any, any questions? Okay. So uh, let's look at an example. So top left, uh, we have a clutter uh, over elements one, two, three, and members and three members. I've dropped the inside brackets to make it easier to read. So the first member has elements one and two, the second one has elements two and three, and the third one has elements three and one. The covering number here can easily be seen to be two. You, you'll need at least two elements to intersect every member. Uh, we don't have disjoint members here, uh, so the covering number, the packing number is one. And if you look at 
the fractional piping number and the fractional covering number, which are the same, that ends up being 1.5. So it's somewhere sitting between the two. To see that, what you can do is you could look at the, the, uh, the linear program for uh, fractional covering, which is just this. And you could look at the solution, one half, one half, one half. And you can see that this is a, uh, um, this is indeed a feasible solution and has value 1.5. And for the dual, you could also look at one half, one half, one half. So the dual solution, uh, this is a, a fractional packing. So it's assigning a value of one half to each one of the three members, one half, one half, one half. So the congestion at every element is precisely one. And both of these solutions have the same value. So this has value 1.5 and this has value 1.5. So that tells you that the optimum for both LPs, which are dual, is 1.5. Uh, the example on the right uh, is another clutter. It's in fact, it's the clutter of triangles of K4. So uh, where the ground set is the edge, uh, edge set. There, the covering number is two. You'll need at least two edges to intersect every uh, triangle of K4. K4 doesn't have disjoint triangles, so the covering number is, the packing number is just one. And uh, I'll let you verify it on your own that in this case, the fractional co packing, the fractional covering number is precisely two. Uh, so um, the covering number in this case is equal to the fractional covering number. And the fractional packing number as a result is also two. Uh, to verify this, you could look at the fractional packing that assigns one half to every one of the four members. So even though the clutter of triangles of K4 doesn't have the joint triangles, it does have the joint triangles in the fractional setting. You could assign one half to every one of the triangles and the congestion of every edge would be at most one. And the value of the fractional packing will be two. Okay. Any, any questions? All right. So, um, so that brings us closer to this, uh, to the uh, problem uh, uh, of uh, uh, this, uh, um, this research project. So we'll say that um, a clutter C is ideal if the feasible region of the fractional covering LP. So this is the fractional covering LP. If the feasible region uh, forms an integral polyhedron. So all the vertices of this polyhedron are integral. In other words, if you look at this set covering LP for any uh, uh, cost vector, you end up getting an integral optimal solution. Okay, so in particular, if you look at an ideal clutter, the covering number is always equal to the fractional covering number, just like that uh, uh, Q6 example, triangles of K4. The covering number there was equal to the fractional covering number. So in particular, if you're working with ideal clutters, the covering number can always be computed in polynomial time. So we saw that in general, computing the covering number is an NP-hard problem, but for the class of ideal clutters, because it coincides with the fractional covering number, this parameter is easily computable. Now, uh, there are plenty of examples of uh, ideal clutters in the literature. Um, uh, the earliest example would be uh, the clutter of SD paths of a graph. Uh, this is due to a result of Ford and Fulkerson from 56. Another way to see this is by using uh, Menger's uh, packing theorem from the 20s. Uh, the clutter of the spanning trees of a graph is not ideal, however, but you could lift it very easily to an integral clutter. So uh, uh, the clutter of rooted arborescences of a digraph. Uh, you can show is, uh, is ideal. So this is nothing but a lifting of spanning trees. And another example comes from die cuts 
and digraphs due to a result of Lucasi and Younger. Uh, it could show that in a directed uh, graph, uh, in a directed graph, the the clutter of um, die cuts, which are cuts where the arcs all go in one direction, that clutter is always ideal. So these are the things that stop your die graph from being strongly connected. Um, there are uh, there are actually more examples. Uh, so what's nice about idealness is that it's closed undertaking uh, the block uh, undertaking blockers. So it's shown by Fulkerson and Lehman that uh, a clutter is ideal if and only if its blocker is ideal. So you could apply that to each one of those three examples and get more examples of ideal clutter. So the clutter of ST cuts. Uh, for the first one would be ideal. For the second one, it would be the clutter of so-called rooted cuts. And for the third one, it would be, it would be the clutter of so-called die joints. Okay. There's two more important examples of uh, ideal clutters. Uh, and these ones uh, essentially come from binary matroids. They have uh, roots in binary matroids. So, Let's uh, let G be a graph and let T be a non-empty uh, even cardinality subset of the vertices I refer to as terminals. So in this theta graph that you see here, I have uh, four terminals. Um, a T cut is a cut that uh, separates the terminals into two odd sets. So uh, for instance, this would be the edges crossing this cut uh, form one T cut. As you can see, there's one terminal on the left, which uh, is an odd number of terminals and three terminals on the right. So this, these are T cuts. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the covers of T cuts turn out to be so-called T joints. Uh, these are edge subsets whose odd degree vertices are precisely T. So, uh, for instance, the graph on the left, if you look at this, uh, the odd degree vertices of the red edges are precisely the four terminals. So this is a T-join. Uh, another example of a T-join would be the claw that you see here. So the odd degree vertices are precisely the terminals. So these are T-joins. And uh, one thing one can easily show is uh, using parity arguments is that T-cuts and T-joints will always have an odd intersection. And one can use this to prove that the clutter of minimal T-cuts and the clutter of minimal T-joints are blockers of one another. And what's interesting is this result of Edmonds and Johnson from 1973. It's a fundamental result in commercial optimization that the clutter of minimal T-cuts is ideal. I, if you write down the set covering inequalities corresponding to the minimal T cuts and add non-negativity constraints, then you get an, a polyhedron whose vertices are all integral. And uh, as a consequence, the blocker of this clutter, which is the clutter of minimal T joints, is also ideal. Okay. Now uh, I can start talking about, now that we've seen uh, different examples of ideal clutters, I can tell you what the problem is. So recall that for an ideal clutter, the covering number is equal to the fractional covering number. Tau is equal to tau star C. Now this tau star of C is equal to the fractional packing number, mu star of C. And so what we can do is we could take a maximum fractional packing Y. And we know this maximum fractional packing Y has the same value as the covering number. Now, a natural question arises, can we choose this Y to be integral? In other words, is tau equal to nu of C? If you look at the first three examples that I showed you, the answer turns out to be yes. So the clutter of ST paths, for the clutter of ST paths, the answer is yes, due to Menger's packing result, that the maximum number of edge distance ST paths is equal to the minimum size of an ST cut. The answer is also yes for the clutter of rooted arborescences of a diagraph, as well as the clutter of die cuts 
of the die graph. Um, so if you look at these three examples, you might venture to guess that yes, uh, for an ideal clutter, the, the packing number and the covering number are the same. However, if you look at the last two examples that I showed you, the clutter of T-cuts and T-joins of a graph, the answer is no. So for the clutter of T-cuts, uh, tau is not always equal to nu, but Levas showed that you could always choose y to be half integral. Uh, and for a concrete example of this, uh, actually you could look at Q6. Q6, uh, uh, it's not an example of this, it's an example of this. Yeah. Uh, you could show that Q6 is uh, the, uh, the clutter of triangles of K4 can be represented as a clutter of T-cuts of the graph. The answer is also no for the clutter of T joints of a graph. Uh, again, because of Q6. Um, and what Seymour showed is that you can't even hope that Y would be half integral. You, can always, you can't always choose Y to be half integral. And the reason is because of Peterson, the Peterson graph. I won't have enough time to talk about this example, uh, but the counterexample comes from the Peterson graph. However, Seymour conjectured that you can always choose y to be a quarter integral. Uh, might seem like a random conjecture, but it actually implied that it's a, it, this conjecture would follow from the generalized Burge for, for Kirsten conjecture on edge colorings of uh, our graphs. Okay. And he actually had a more uh, general conjecture. It's actually an incomparable conjecture, but uh, still more general. Um, he conjectured that every ideal clutter has an optimal fractional packing that is so-called dyadic. And by dyadic, I mean every entry is uh, an integer multiple of one over uh, some power of two. Okay, so uh, this conjecture can be found in uh, Lex Scriver's uh, uh, three volume Bible. Uh, it's in one of the further notes uh, sections. Um, <clears throat> and what we prove in this work is a first step towards proving this conjecture. Uh, we prove that given an ideal clutter with covering number at least two, there always exists a dyadic fractional packing of value two. Okay, so this proves the conjecture for the case when the covering number is equal to two. Um, we prove that this Y can be chosen in a way so as to have quasi-polynomial support. Uh, that the support is of the order size of the ground set to the log of the size of the ground set. And we prove that it can also be found in quasi-polynomial time. We in fact conjectured that uh, two and three sh uh, can be improved to polynomial. Uh, in fact, we, we conjectured that two can be improved to, I think, a, a linear function in E. We have an exact description for it. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about our, uh, I'll, I'll give the main ideas for the proof of one. I won't have enough time to talk about the proofs for two or uh, three. Okay. Any, any questions? Okay. All right, so what are the proof ideas? Uh, so the, the main proof idea is the uh, minor theory. Um, so, and for, for clutters, just like graphs and matrices, we, uh, 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 we can define a notion of minors. Um, so let's see the clutter over ground set E and let's take an element, a particular element E. We can define two smaller clutters, um, two clutters over a smaller ground set called the deletion and contraction, where the deletion, uh, 
is over the ground set E minus E. And the members consist of those members of the clutter that do not contain the element E at all. Okay. So you just remove all the members that uh, contain that element E. And uh, you could also come up with a notion of contraction. For contraction, again, the ground set has size uh, is, is E minus uh, uppercase E minus uh, lowercase E. And the members are obtained from the old members by taking away the element E. Now, once you take away the element E, the members are no longer minimal. It could be that one member contains another one. So what we'll do is we'll just focus on the minimal sets uh, of C minus E. And uh, if you uh, apply a series of deletions and contractions, you'll obtain what's called the minor. And uh, the sequence of deletions and contractions you apply uh, does not change the uh, final outcome. Okay. Now, if you, for instance, look at the clutter of circuits of a graph G, then C minus at C delete I contract J is precisely the clutter of circuits of the graph minor G delete I contract J. So deletion and contraction and clutters extend the notion of deletion and contraction in graphs. For matroids, if you, for instance, look at the port clutter of a matroid, if you delete I and contract J in the clutter, it corresponds to deletion and contraction in terms of the matrix. Okay. And uh, deletion and contraction uh, swap roles uh, in the blocker. So here I have a, um, uh, um, I have a typo. Deletion corresponds to contraction in the blocker and vice versa. So blocker of C delete I contract J is nothing but blocker of C contract I delete J. And this is uh, very similar to um, how miners uh, uh, interact with uh, matroid duality, deletion and contraction swap rules in terms of the matroid dual. Okay. Now deletion and contraction have very natural polyhedral interpretations. If we look at the set covering polyhedron of a clutter uh, C, then deletion uh, corresponds to uh, projection. Essentially, it corresponds to setting the variable to infinity. Okay. And uh, contraction corresponds to restriction. It corresponds to setting the variable to zero. And because restrictions and projections preserve polyhedral integrality, uh, idealness is closed undertaking uh, minors. So if a clutter is ideal, then so is every minor of it. Okay, so we're, we're dealing with a minor closed class of objects. Um, Okay, so one can ask what are the forbidden minors to this class? The forbidden minors turn out to be too complex to, uh, to, to describe, but there are two important, uh, three important families of uh, forbidden minors I would like to bring to your attention. The first one comes from designs. So take an integer n greater or equal to three. The delta uh, denoted by delta sub n has ground set one through n, and the members are uh, one, two, one, three, one n, and two, three up to n. So they they correspond to the lines of uh, this uh, projective plane. It's actually a degenerate projective plane. And uh, one thing you can show is that this clutter is in fact non-ideal because you can actually come up with a fractional vertex of the polyhedron. So you assign a value of n minus 2 over n minus 1 to this, to the top element, and 
the same value of one over n minus one to all the other elements. And you could see that this is indeed a fractional cup. And because it's a fractional vertex, um, that implies that delta n is non-ideal. And as I said, idealness is closed under taking blockers. So that implies that the blocker of delta n is also an unideal. But the blocker of delta n is delta n itself. And I'll leave that to you as an exercise. So this is in a class of identically self-blocking uh, clutters. Another set of examples, uh, non-ideal examples, come from uh, odd holes in, in graphs. So take an odd integer n greater or equal to 5. An odd hole of dimension n has graphs at 1 through n, whose members are just the edges of an odd hole. Um, and one thing one can show is that if you look at the point 1 half everywhere, this ends up being a vertex, a fractional vertex of the set covering quality tree. When you do this proof, you'll see that uh, the only thing you end up using is that the minimum cardinality members of your clutter are the edges of an odd hole. So this gives us a more general notion of an extended odd hole. So we'll say an extended odd hole of dimension n has ground set one through n, whose minimum cardinality members are the edges of an odd hole. And this implies that uh, extended odd holes are non-ideal. And as a result, the blocker of an extended odd hole is also non-ideal. One important thing about blockers of extended odd, hole, uh, odd holes is that they have large members. If you look at the blocker of an extended odd hole of dimension n, every member would have to have size n, at least n plus 1 over 2. So the members are very large. And this uh, ends up being a key feature. Okay. And this brings us to a class of clean clutters. Uh, we say that a clutter is clean if it has no minor that is a delta or the blocker of an extended odd hole. So you saw deltas and blockers of extended odd holes are non-ideal clutters. So ideal clutters forbid these minors. Now, if we forbid the, the, this two class of, these two infinite classes of non-ideal clutters, uh, we'll say that our clutter is uh, clean. Uh, it might uh, seem uh, quite unnatural to define this notion, but there's uh, many, uh, other reasons why this class is important, why we're excluding blockers of odd holes rather than odd holes themselves. Um, but uh, one reason why we're doing this is because there's two other interesting classes of uh, minor closed classes of clutters that are clean. One of them come from binary matroids and they're called binary clutters. And another one uh, comes from intersecting families, uh, clutters without intersecting families. Here, we're just working with the class of ideal clutters. So every, um, every ideal clutter is, uh, is clean. And what we show uh, in our work is a more general result that every clean clutter with covering number at least two has a dyadic fractional packing of value two. Uh, so we proved this more that is that more general result. Um, now I'll uh, give a brief uh, uh, sketch of the, of the proof, just the main ideas uh, that go into the proof, just so you see where this dyadic, uh, 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 dyadic property comes from. So let's see the clean clutter over uh, ground set V. So you, you'll notice that I've changed the, the notation I use for, for the ground set to V. Uh, by applying uh, deletion, uh, we may assume that the covering number is 2 and that every element in the ground set appears in a minimum cover of uh, C. 
Essentially, what we do is if an element doesn't appear in a minimum cover of size two, you just delete the element and you repeat the argument. And this works uh, because we're just looking for fractional packing of value two. So as long as we keep the covering number at least two, we should be okay. Um, now at this point, uh, we could look at the graph of minimum covers. All the minimum covers have size two. So they naturally correspond to the edges of a graph over vertex set B. And the edges correspond to the covers of size two. Okay. So for instance, if you look at Q6, which is the clutter of triangles of K4, the covers of size two end up being one, two, three, four, and five, six. So you end up getting this, this matching. Now, you can show that this graph is always a bipartite graph. And this is uh, one place where you see where this cleanness property comes from. The reason is if this graph is not bipartite, it has a corpus odd cycle. And this corpus odd cycle, if it's a triangle, it corresponds to a delta three minor in the blocker. Or if it's an odd hole, it corresponds to a so-called extent to an extended odd hole minor. We're only working with the minimum size numbers here. So you get a delta three or extended odd hole minor in the blocker, which ends up corresponding to a delta three or the blocker of an extended odd hole minor and the clutter itself, uh, which is a contradiction because C is a clean, clean clutter. And what do you do at this point? You look at the number of connected components of this uh, bipartite graph, uh, denote that by R. And uh, we proceed by induction on the number of connected components. Now, if the number of connected components is precisely one, there's this result uh, from a few years ago that uh, Debbie and Lee and I showed that if our graph G is connected, what you can show is that uh, if U and U prime are the parts of a bipartition, V bipartition of your connected graph, those guys should form members of the clutter. U and U prime should form members of the clutter. And that corresponds to an integral packing of value two. All right, so in this case, you can say there's an integral packing, not just a dyadic one. Uh, for the induction step, when R has size two, uh, we have this key lemma uh, that says that if U comma U prime is the bipartition of one connected component, then what you can do is you can delete and contract uh, the, the parts of this uh, connected component. Uh, uh, there's two possible ways to delete and contract them. You could either delete U or contract U prime, or you could contract U and delete U prime. In both cases, you'll end up getting a covering number of two. The covering number doesn't drop to one. So by an induction hypothesis, you can come up with a dyadic fractional packing of value two in each one of them, Z and Z prime. So here, if you look at the incidence matrix of the clutter C, you get a dyadic fractional packing Z here, a dyadic fractional packing Z prime here. And what do you do? You take one half of the first one and you take one half of the second one. And that ends up giving you a dyadic fractional packing of value two in the original clutter. And that's where that dyadic condition comes in. Okay, it's not gonna preserve the integrality assumption, but it will preserve dyadicness. And you repeat, you repeat, and at the end, what do you end up with? You end up with an, an, a dyadic packing of value two, where the degree of dyadicness is one over two to the R minus one, all right? So the, the fractionality be, would be worse uh, depending on the, if the number of connected components is large. And uh, the leaves of this enumeration tree that you get, the number of leaves determine the support of your fractional packing. And the total number of uh, nodes in your enumeration tree determine the running time of the algorithm. So the support will be at most two to the R and the complexity would be proportional to two to the R. And in fact, what we can show is that the support and time complexity can be improved to quasi-polynomial in terms of the number of connected components.
I won't, I won't get into that. And that's the, uh, that's pretty much the algorithm. Okay. Now the final part of the talk is, uh, I want to stress the importance of uh, clean clutters. Uh, we saw why they were important in the context of dyadic fractional packing, but they're in fact important for uh, other problems in, uh, in clutter theory. The first thing that uh, uh, makes them important is that detecting cleanness uh, can be done in polynomial time. So you can test the cleanness of a clutter in polynomial time. In other words, you can look for a delta minor or the block carbon extended auto in polynomial time. Now this is in stark contrast with idealness itself. Uh, it was shown by uh, uh, Goli Ding, Wien and Zhang, uh, and uh, Fang that testing idealness uh, is an NP hard problem. However, if you relax the notion of idealness to that of cleanness, then you can test this property in polynomial time. And in fact, Guoli's result, what it says is that looking for extended oddball minors is an, is an empty hard problem. However, if you switch to the blocker, this becomes an easy problem. Okay. Uh, there are two other important classes of clean clutters, binary clutters and clutters without an intersecting minor. I'll briefly mention these. Uh, so a clutter is binary if the symmetric difference of any three members contains another member. Um, and uh, binary clutters essentially come from binary natures due to this result of Seymour that sees a binary clutter if and only if it's the port of a binary matrix. And as a result of this uh, characterization, if a clutter is binary, then so is its blocker and also every minor. And uh, one thing one can easily show is that the deltas are not binary. The extended all holes are not binary. And because this notion is closed undertaking blockers, that implies that blockers of extended odd holes are not also not binary. And as a result, clean clutters are binary. Uh, binary clutters are clean, my apologies. Another important uh, class comes from uh, uh, intersecting families. We say that a clutter is intersecting if its covering number is at least two. However, we do not have disjoint members. So the packing number is one. And one thing one can show is that Deltas are intersecting because they come from projective planes. And the blocker of an extended odd hole is also intersecting because the members are very large. Then you don't have enough room to pack two of them. And so every clutter without an intersecting minor is clean. And clutters without an intersecting minor, they end up being important, uh, as you will see shortly. So this forms another important class of clean clutters. And uh, so one natural question given Seymour's conjecture is, does the conjecture hold more generally for clean clutters? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. Uh, it's not even true for the other two subclasses. So uh, this might uh, shed some skepticism into Seymour's conjecture. However, uh, there is uh, some evidence to the contrary. So we know that I, this conjecture cannot be true for the for the class of clean clutters, what if what if we intersect uh, what if we intersect ideal clutters with uh, the other two classes of clean clutters? We end up getting interesting uh, uh, interesting results. So, if we look at a special case where we intersect I ideal and binary, the conjecture becomes every ideal binary clutter has an optimal fractional packing that is dyadic. And this is consistent with prior evidence. If you look at Lovas's result on T cuts, you get, an, you get a half integral optimal fractional packing. Uh, Jim and Beltran showed in 2002 that this is also true for the clutter of odd cycles of a sign graph. If the clutter of odd circuits of a sign graph is ideal, then it always has an optimal fractional packing that is half integral. 
And uh, this is also consistent with what Beltran and I showed uh, a few years ago about the clutter of odd ST walks of a signed graph. So this conjecture seems to be consistent with the uh, earlier result. If we intersect idealness with uh, clutters without an intersecting minor, the conjecture becomes what I've written on the slide. And in fact, there's a stronger conjecture known as the tau equals two conjecture that predicts that every ideal clutter without an intersecting minor has an optimal fractional packing that is integral. So it's not only dyadic, but it should be integral. And so this conjecture provides an interesting backdoor to tackling this, this conjecture. So it seems to be consistent. And if you look at the uh, third special case, if we intersect all the three classes together, so if you look at ideal binary clutters without an intersecting minor, then this follows from a, an important result of Seymour from 1977 known as the max Lohmann cut result, that every binary clutter without a Q6 minor has the so-called max Lohmann cut property. This essentially implies a conjecture, but with the stronger conclusion that there is an integral optimal fractional pack for these clutters. So all these three special cases are consistent with earlier, uh, earlier results. And uh, with that, I, uh, I'll conclude my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, it's a really nice talk. I really like the area. Uh, are there any questions? You can uh, say them in chat or just ask out loud. So I have one to get us started, and that is, uh, I guess, are, it seems like there are probably examples then where, say, you have the half integral property, but you don't have the Erdős Posa property, like as in you can't. Uh, yes, yes. So you can look at the uh, clutter of, uh, odd, like, if you look at a, an even face embedding, right? Uh, on a projective plane, right? Then there, the clutter right. of odd cycles uh, has this dyadic property. You can always come up with a half integral uh, packing of odd cycles that matches the covering number. However, uh, the packing number is one for this class. So you get, you get a, a class of uh, clutters where nu is one, but tau can be arbitrarily large. But if you relax uh, integrality to half integrality, then uh, then new star uh, right yeah matches, actually I uh, remember um, maybe we can talk about this later but I think I'll have another question relating to that after the talk I guess with a question in chat uh, and that is hyperplanes in a matroid of the clutter what are the blockers of this clutter ask the uh, good uh, good good question uh, the blocker of the Hyperplanes. So I, I haven't thought about this uh, question, but I, I suspect uh, there, is, there would be a nice formulation for this. So I would have to think about this. Um, I don't have an answer off the top of my head. All right. Uh, so while everyone's still around, let me go ahead and say that uh, next week, Tony Hewn is going to be talking about subgraph densities in a surface. And also the speakers coming up for the next few weeks are listed online now too. Uh, thank you again, Alvin. Thank you.